Hey everyone, it's the Block TV Podcast. We talk about it, all the stories that actually matter in society. I'm your host, Gabriel Logan, and welcome to this Saturday edition on August 11th, 2018. So let's get this started. Hey everyone, hope you're all having a great weekend. A um, little disappointed, my dad isn't answering and I was supposed to hang out with him all weekend. So I don't know what's going on. Um, but that wasn't what I was going to talk about. I was actually going to talk about this that I just saw right now on my news story. A plane was stolen by an employee and crashes it. A suicidal airline mechanic took off without any passengers, thank goodness, and impacted near Seattle. A Horizon Air employee described as suicidal commemorated an empty turboprop passenger plane at Seattle's main airport Friday night and wore low over Pungent Sound with a pair of Air Force P-15s in pursuit before crashing it into a small island, authorities said. The FBI Seattle field office said Friday, Early signs do not point toward terrorism. Pierce County Sheriff's Department spokesman Ed Troyer described the suspect as an unarmed suicidal 29-year-old man from the county doing stunts in the air before the crash. And here's a video of it. He stole it on August 10th. According to authorities, he flew over Pakistan as a pair of Air Force 15s flown in pursuit. See, now he's upside down and he's crashing it. Oh my god. That was a close call. See, and they, they were telling him to land the plane. After about an hour, the plane crashed in the especially populated Kenton Island, ca- catching a large fire. The man referred to as Rich and Richard by air traffic controllers in the tense recording said he was just a broken guy as authorities tried to divert the 76-seat bombardier Q400 away from populated areas. He took off with the stolen aircraft at about 8 p.m. Friday from Seattle Tacoma International Airport. I have cousins in that area. I was an employee of Horizon Air, the Alaska Air Group said in a statement, the aircraft slammed into the Kenan Island about an hour later. Authorities said triggering an intense blaze. The Woodland Island, about 25 miles southwest of the airport, has a population of about 20 people. The Seattle Times reported 
and is accessible only by ferry. Pierce County Sheriff Paul Pastor calls it a joyride gone terribly wrong. He said it appears that the man died in a crash and that there was no injuries on the ground. According to the Times, the FBI's leading the investigation authority said Saturday. The man was a ground service agent with more than three years of experience. Those agents guide planes, handle bags, and de-ice planes. Horizon Air says Mike L., the director of operations at SeaTac, told reporters Saturday the man used a tractor to spin the plane 180 degrees so he could taxi to the runway. Investigators have not discussed, disclosed how the man was able to steal the plane and take it aloft, but the suicidal state evident in his radio exchanges is likely to receive, revive the debate about background checks for aviation employees with access to secure areas. The United States has about 900,000 aviation workers, according to the most recent federal data and the screening procedures they are subject to are pro- pretty rudimentary, said Mary Chaveo, the Department of Transportation. The incident has also raised questions about the physical security of the planes through aircraft mechanics at board access to roughly taxi planes along the tarmac. Crew members are not supposed to be allowed inside the cockpit. Um... And then here's another video that a woman uh, posted of when the plane was doing barrel rolls and then crashed. He's going upside down. He's upside down. Holy shit. 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 Oh my god, oh my god, is he okay? He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Guys, he's coming this way. He's coming this way. Guys, do we leave? What do we do? Are you sure he's not gonna hit us? You're sure? He's not gonna hit us? Are you sure he's not gonna hit us? Are you sure he's not gonna hit us? Are you sure he's not gonna hit us? Are you sure? So in the video, there was some intense footage of uh, the carrier, the plane flying, and it was doing barrel rolls, and it was almost looked like it was about to crash on the ground. Um, I will also link this in the description of this video, but they all said F-15 Eagles in um, basically trying to divert uh, Rich. Communication between Rich and the air traffic controllers Revealed a conversation between authorities and Rich, who busters say he fueled the plane to go check out, uh, check out on the Olympics. Rich detailed his experience flying from video games and asked for the coordinates to the killer whale sharpshooting her dead calf through Washington coastal waters for nearly three weeks. You know, the mama orca with the baby, I want to go see that guy, Rich explains, according to the audio obtained by Canadian journalist Jimmy Thompson. At one point, an air traffic controller advises he should land the aircraft carrier of the airfield of the nearby military base, Joint Base Lewis McCord. The Times reported, oh man, Rich says, those guys will rough me up if I try and land there. I think I might mess something up there too. I wouldn't want to do that. They probably have an anti-aircraft. The air traffic control says they don't have those weapons. We're just trying to find a place for you to land safely, he says. Rich replies, I'm not quite ready to bring it down just yet, but holy smokes, I got to stop looking at the fuel because it's going down quick. He explains he had not experienced expand fuel so quickly, so he thinks about what comes next. 
that is probably jail time for life, huh? He says, I would hope it is for a guy like me. At one point, Rich appears to believe he will not live through the moment. I've got a lot of people that care about me. It's going to disappoint them to hear that, that I did this. I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Just a broken guy. Just got a few screws loose. I guess never really knew until now. And then here's another video um, on Twitter. And uh, this whole article is on the Washington Post. But, I mean, this is, again, I mean, Jesus Christ, this happened, what, on the 10th or the 9th? Um, And this is brought to you by the Washington Post. So I will definitely have this in the description of the video. But this, I mean, we got to do something about this. Enough is enough. I mean, we just lost a transgender activist and a transgender man. And now a a worker at Horizon Air, and he killed himself. When are we going to start talking about this and stopping mental illness like this? I mean, this is getting insane. I mean, we've lost so many people to suicide. It's shocking to me. He took his own life. I'm glad that no one got killed. I'm glad that no one else got hurt with his actions. But now he hurt wildlife. And he crashed the plane into an island and it burned. I I don't understand what's going on in this country. Um, I feel like ever since Trump became president, I feel like things are getting worse. People are getting more depressed. People are losing their jobs. Coca-Cola prices are going up. Harley Davidson's going up. Now they're talking about leaving Louisville, Kentucky to start manufacturing in Thailand. Yeah, talk about making America great again. We need to do more about mental health. We really do. I mean, we pushed... I mean, the thing is, it it happens at work. It happens at home. There's something going on, and nobody does anything to do anything about it. All these people have took their lives in just, like, less than a few months. I mean, Jesus Christ, you had Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain took their own lives within three days of each other. A transgender activist um, took took his own life, sorry about that, took his own life, and now you have this guy in Tacoma, Washington, which is scary because I have cousins in that area. I have cousins in the Seattle area. I have cousins in the Tacoma area. I have cousins in the Everett area. And I have cousins in the Spokane area. So it's really goddamn scary to hear something like this. I mean, even that train accident that derailed, that was right near of where one of my cousins actually lives. And he checked in on Facebook and said he was safe. And when I saw that, I went, what the fuck? And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I'm glad he's okay. So, oh my God. I mean, I mean, look, there was a story not too long ago where a, guy, where a pilot locked the cabin doors and he went all the way up into the sky. Went all the way up. And it was an airline pilot. And he went all the way up and then he fell all the way down. And he killed himself with the plane. I don't know what airline it was. I kind of forgot what, what it was. But I remember that story. And it's just... And I think people were on board that too. And killed, and he killed all those innocent people. 
I'm just glad that when this guy, I mean, it's sad and tragic that he killed himself, but I'm thankful he didn't hurt anyone else. This could have been a travesty and a disaster for so many other lives. I'm just thankful he didn't kill anyone. I'm glad he didn't hurt anyone else. But Jesus Christ, man, this is scary as fuck is what he just did. I mean, to have that mindset of that tunnel vision and not thinking of anything else but your death. That's it. That's all you're focused on. I mean, he's not even thinking of himself. That's what I try to tell people because, you know, I'm a depressive person and I I know people who are depressive as well. And I kind of understand their mindset. It's like a tunnel vision. You can't, you're trying to get out of it and you're constantly telling yourself, I mean, not telling yourself, but you're constantly being told you're worthless, you're hopeless, you're a piece of shit, you're nothing, you know, and it's that constant cycle. And there's nothing else that tells you otherwise. And for him to do this is awful. I mean, we really need, we seriously have a huge crisis on our hands of how much people are taking their own lives. I mean, this is insane. I just did a story yesterday. This is why it's hard for me to do podcasts anymore. I'm getting news reports all the time about stuff like this. Just yesterday, I was in my jacuzzi. This is insane. It's like I'm not even doing this. It's weird. It's like I was in the jacuzzi. My back was hurting. I was just relaxing. And then all of a sudden, I get a notification of Casey Hook, who passed away at the age of 21. And they're still trying to determine the cause of death. And I'm like, oh my God, really? And I didn't really know who the person was because I don't follow a lot of activism like that. Uh, But it's not like I'm not, you know, amazed at these people for what they do. So I was reading the article and I went, whoa, this, this guy is fucking inspiring. This guy's awesome. And then all of a sudden today... Get a news story about about a guy who crashed a plane into coma. Suicide. What the hell is going on? Seriously? Another person has taken their own life. It needs to stop. And enough is enough, and uh, it's getting harder and harder to do podcasts anymore. Just like I said in my last video, it's just getting insane. It is getting ridiculous. I have covered, I mean, again, I have covered Sheila Stiles. I have covered August Ames. I've covered... I've covered Kate Spade, I've covered Anthony Bourdain, I've Kate, I've covered Casey Hoke, and now I'm covering this guy in Tacoma. It's like one year, <laughs> and all this is happening constantly, and it's just sad. It's so sad. I'm going to do a whole uh, article um, on the block tv.com because we we need to take action. This is getting crazy. I mean, you have a person who's mentally ill and he took a plane and crashed it. Could you imagine if he would have killed other people by doing that? I mean, it comes off like terrorism. Could you imagine if he took that plane and he crashed into a building? Could you imagine? I mean, I'm glad that no one else got hurt. I'm glad it was just him and no one else. I mean, I'm sad that he's gone, but holy shit, he just put everyone's lives in jeopardy by doing that crazy act. I understand the feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, and you're really sad. I get that. I do. I'm lonely. I've never had a girlfriend. I I cry about it sometimes. But Jesus Christ, this is like on a whole new scale. This is like a whole new level of what people are doing. Like these people 
who harm all these people and then they take themselves out. Really? Why couldn't you do that first? Like I read a news article where this guy um, sexually harmed a child and then he took his own life. I'm like, you should have just took your own life before you harmed the child, dude. It's just, it's getting, oh my God, it's getting redundant. It's getting, it's just over and over and over again, you hear about this. You know, it, 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 seriously, like this country now is just going to be known for wildfires, massacres, like gun violence and and suicides. That That's basically our whole fucking country. And who's in charge? Trump de Dumpty sitting on his wall. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I just I don't get it. I mean, this is this is like the worst administration I've ever seen, and they don't do anything about this. Something needs to be done. I mean, people are fucking killing themselves constantly. You know, if we had a, I'm, I'm, you know, I gotta say something. If if we had our political system was a lot like Europe's, we'd be much fucking happier. It's why Denmark is considered one of the happiest countries in the world, and it's why Coca Cola has a hidden Denmark flag in their O, because it's a bottle of happiness, and Denmark is the happiest country in the world. So you can see where that goes. If you open a Coke in Denmark. You're beyond happy. So, and it makes sense. Den, uh, the Danes don't make very much money. I mean, they make good money, but they don't work as much. They probably work like 30 hours of work week. They get sick pay, maternity leave. They get all these things. They can go to college without paying anything. And, you know, people say oh, socialism's a bad thing or it's a bad word. It's working in Denmark, it's working in Sweden, and people are happy. How often do you hear about this psycho shit? Like you do in those countries versus ours. You don't. Mental illness is all over the place. But our country, I feel like, has the worst majority of it. I mean, look at who they voted. I mean, come on, you have to have a sign of mental illness if you vote for an asshole like Donald Trump. I mean, come on, you have to be like a little wired. Like, you've got to be like a little fucked up in the head. I mean, come on, no rational human being who's a professor or is super intelligent is going to vote for this numbskull. No rational human being would vote for Trumpy Dumpty. I'm telling you that right now. But what's going on right now in this world? I mean, I'm hoping everyone will vote in November, but I, I'm just, I, I need to take a break from podcasting, to be honest with you guys. I mean, I love doing it. I'm so happy I'm up to 200 subscribers. You guys are amazing. Um, I enjoy going on your videos as well. Sometimes I'll watch them and I'll like them and stuff like that. People who've subscribed. I try to see what other people are into and what they like or whatever. It's a, it's a fun community, really. Um, it's a mixed bag with me, with YouTube. Facebook is just the devil. (laughs) I'm still waiting to get my account back. Isn't it ironic, though? That Facebook, when they decided to pull the plug on me for 30 days, it was the same time when they lost over $150 million. So, that's karma, baby. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, man, it's hot out here. Um, The weather looks like it's not as bad. It's not as smoky. Uh, There's a little bit of orange haze, but not too bad, actually. Um, I'm definitely going to do some laps right now in the pool. I got to lose some weight, man. I, I got to lose weight. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep doing the dating thing. I'm going to keep looking for other jobs because I, I got to know what love is, man. I'm not stopping until I know what that's like. But anyway, I appreciate everyone listening to podcasts. But this this story is just sad. I mean, 
I'm just so goddamn thankful that no one got killed from this guy. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's just... Wow. It's like every day you hear about this now. You know? It's just... It's getting overwhelming. It's like you turn on the news. You want to see a happy story one day. Of a kid helping a kid who's paraplegic. Or you want to hear about some guy helping an army vet. You know? You, you want to hear about women empowering other women. A Me Too movement. You want to hear about something positive. About uplifting of something dark and tragic. Now, it's like... It's just constantly dark and tragic. There's nothing positive after this. So, uh, people, get some fucking help. Um, Seriously, you, 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 I mean, I I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, uh, go on the website, call the number if you're in distress. uh, Seek a friend. Go to a psychiatrist. Go to a psychologist. Do electric shock therapy. I mean, do ketamine treatment. Do something for your mental illness issues. I just... I'm just so heartbroken by all these people that are doing this to themselves. And who knows, the guy probably was a good guy. And he probably, you know, had friends and family that loved him. And now he's gone. And he crashed his plane. I mean, it's just getting redundant. It's, it's over and over and over of people just self-harm and taking their own lives in tragic, just devastating incidences like this one. I mean, taking a plane and crashing it is very dramatic. Not only is it over dramatic, but it's just so terrifying to put everyone else's lives in jeopardy. I mean, you got those people screaming, watching a a plane, looking like it's about to crash, and finally it does. But he started doing barrel rolls and going upside down and and looking like it was going to crash. And he was doing all these maneuvers with the plane. And then he decided he didn't want to be here anymore. And it's just... I mean, I'm going to make a whole piece... Uh, It's going to take me a few days, but I need to do something. I need to write like a whole piece on the block TV about mental illness and why we should do a lot more about this kind of thing, especially in the workplace. Um, We we need to have this is the the, you know what pisses me off is that this is the shit that Bernie was trying to fucking do. He was trying to have it just like the socialism that they have over in Sweden. There are places where if you have mental illness, you actually get paid and get and it it's just like sick pay, but it's called mental health day. It's the same thing, mental health pay. So if you're not feeling well and you're mentally ill, you can take a day off, still get paid and go see a psychiatrist or go see someone. In Argentina, I I just watched an episode of Parts Unknown. In Argentina, more than like 80% of the country sees a psychologist. And it's like a mandatory thing. Everyone practically sees a psychologist in Argentina. And Anthony Bourdain said, and I quote, he said he went to a Johnny Rockets and he had a burger. It was the worst burger of his experience. And then he got this tunnel of just waves of depression for up to three days. And he just couldn't get out of it. And he said he would be at an airport and he would just stare at something. And he just couldn't move, he said. I mean, he made it abundantly clear that he has depression. He makes it abundantly clear he has anxiety issues. The way he moves his hands constantly, how he constantly is flickering his hands. That's a sign of anxiety. I can tell because I've done that. And he sees a psychi- and he saw a psychologist. And they said that he, you know, he went and saw that and he said that, you know, there's times where he doesn't feel happy. Even though he makes money, he goes, you think I would, you know, all this money I make and all the things I do in my, in my life and everything else, you think that I would be happy and I would have a great life, but I'm still miserable. You know, you could tell he loves his daughter. You could tell he's a great family man. But he just doesn't feel happy of anything he does. 
And I get that. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's days where, you know, even like stuff that I love doing, like playing the piano, and there's some days that you just don't want to. I get it. I mean, there's days I've been depressed and I don't want to do my podcast. But I would rather fight than, you know, I, I, I've i never been in love before. I've never, you know, had a girlfriend, so I'm not going to stop fighting to know what that's like. And I just, it's just sad to me, man. It is. It's it's crazy. I mean, and I, I, I just honestly think again and again, I've seen this in other countries, that if we had the same implementations of mental health like they do in other parts of the world, we would do better off in our country. We would. We definitely would. But you have Trump who doesn't care about your health care. He doesn't care about your rights. He doesn't care that you're transgender or whatever. He doesn't give a shit about you or this country. He's a horrible human being. He's a disgrace. I mean, we need to fight for this stuff. We need to fight for this stuff. We should have mental health and have it the same as a sick leave. We should have fucking maternity leave. Why is it that in Sweden you get like what? Up to fucking six months, up to a year? And then even the male gets like 30 or 60 days to stay with the kid and they get paid for it while they stay with their kids. And on average, more Americans than ever before are moving to Sweden because of better life. Because they get better education of school. And because they're getting healthier food and cleaner air and recyclable materials. And they're recycling like never before. 80% of the country of Sweden recycles. They're constantly doing renovations to put better air quality um, from carbon emissions from cars and whatever else. I've read into Sweden. I know a lot about this country. And I just feel like if we had those things like they do in Scandinavia, we would be a lot better off. And I just, I, I just, I get sick and tired of how Americans are so hell bent on their fucking guns and on their fucking like big old fake titters and all this other stupid nonsense that has nothing to do to make this country better. And it's like, you guys talk about making America great again. Well, how about putting some goddamn socialism aspects into this fucking country? How about that, motherfuckers? You know? You, you want to make America great again? Then let's start with having universal health care for every goddamn American. It's a right. It's not a goddamn choice. We should be able to have Planned Parenthood so every woman has care for not just abortions but for everything else to prevent pregnancies I, I like how all these like republicans go nuts about this shit and it's like what are you fuckers gonna care about that kid are you fuckers gonna do anything about that child you fuckers aren't gonna do anything because you know what you would do you would give them a fucking backpack in a canteen and say go the fuck to war in iraq that's what you people do you would rather send them to war for a godforsaken war, put us in trillions and trillions of dollars in debt, which you people are known for, for fucking recessions. That's all Republicans are ever known for, is for fucking recessions. Why is it that every goddamn Republican can't fucking understand that you're the fuckers who cause recessions, not us? Even though I feel like liberals are really bad at math, and I feel like, you know, you, they, they can't get their head out of their ass, and they can't fucking stop doing all this shit about, you know, tax everything. But at least they're not doing recessions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, God. I can go on and on and on about politics, but I'm just saying I'm getting really agitated that we do not have mental health advocacy we we need more than that you know this is fucking annoying i mean look at it's been less than a year look how many people have died from mental illness or people who've died from drugs kate spade had bipolar depression Anthony Bourdain had depression, but he was also a drug addict. Amber Rain 
uh, took her own life with cocaine. Sheila Stiles, I think, was, I think, uh, pharmaceuticals, narcotics. Um, I think it was like opioids or something. August Ames, hanging in a park. And she obviously has mental health issues. She was abused sexually as a child. And she had depression. And I'm assuming drugs. We need to do more to stop this vicious cycle. And now we have a guy who took a fucking plane. A fucking plane and crashed it on an island in Tacoma. He could have killed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people with that plane. That is a weapon of destruction in the wrong hands. And it just pisses me off that we live in a country where no one's doing anything. Why don't we stand up and do something about this? Same thing with gun violence. You raise how many of these white people go into schools and they just take on people for no fucking reason. It's like, that woman didn't do anything to make her life a living hell. She's a Christian. And in 1999 of Columbine High School, they took her life because she was Christian. They took another kid's life because he was black. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Since Columbine, we've had lots of those massacres. Lots of those massacres. Vegas was the worst shooting in American history. It was the worst one. And I knew people that were there. And it pisses me off that we're not doing anything about it. And then you have all these Republicans constantly saying, well, it's not the time to talk about guns. Well, when is the time, motherfucker? When is the time? Because the time is now, bitch. The time is now. Just like mental health. The time is now. Not tomorrow. Not a year from now. It's fucking now. And we need to do more about it. We need gun control in this country. You don't hear about the shit in Japan. You don't hear about the shit in Sweden. You don't hear about the shit in Denmark. You don't hear about this shit in Costa Rica. But somehow in the United States of us, it happens every fucking five seconds. And now look. Yesterday, I talked about a transgender activist who took his own life. Now I'm talking about a guy who took a plane who took his own life in Tacoma. Do you not see the pandemic of this pendulum of just psychotic mind shit? I'm tired of it. I'm taking a stand against this. We need reform now. We need mental health reform now. We need gun control now. Because guns and mental illness do not mix. We've seen that time and time again. You have fuckheads who have accidentally shot themselves. And people talk about, well, it's our right to own a gun. It's our right. Okay, it is your right. It's also your right to be a fucking idiot, too. But we're not taking that away. But maybe we should. Because if there's less fucking idiots like you in this society, maybe we'd get through somewhere. I, I just, I, I hate how there's like no intelligent people in this country. And I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this on my YouTube channel, but I don't give a shit. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of hearing about people harming themselves. I'm tired of gun violence in this country. By gang members, crazy white kids that just can't get anywhere in life. Like, I just can't take it anymore. I don't want to hear about this shit anymore. So I'm taking a stand for this. I'm going to start, like, rattling off some petitions. I'm going to put a petition on the Block TV. I'm going to just talk about this whole thing. I'm going to make videos. We, we got to take a stand against this stuff, man. And nobody, nobody should have to go through this. This shouldn't happen in this country. We talk about how great our country is. We talk about how beautiful our country is. Well, then why don't we actually prove it? Why don't we actually prove it? If you want to make this country great, then let's start with mental health. 
And let's start with your fucking guns. Let's start with you crazy white Republicans. Let's start there. Maybe we can get somewhere in society. Because I'm getting tired of this stuff. I really am. It's depressing. It's awful. I don't understand why this keeps happening in society. It's not cool. And I'm tired of it. But thank you for listening to Block TV Podcast. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take a break from podcasts for a while, but check out the blacktv.com. I'll post a whole article about uh, mental illness and how, what we can do to help because this is this giant stigma that needs to end. I mean, even people are scared to talk about it. This is just happening every goddamn second, and we got to do something. So check out the blacktv.com. I'll post more about this. I'll also be doing a video soon, um, a slideshow, and I'll post that on my website. Um, I also post that on the YouTube channel. So thank you for listening. Thank you for 200 subscribers. That's awesome. Once I get to 1,000, I promise I'll be sending the first 100 people um, stickers and whatever else. So I just got to start a P.O. box because you guys don't need to know who I am. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening to Black TV Podcast. Take it easy. You can comment, like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Share the videos. I don't care. Thank you for listening. Take it easy.